Welcome back to the Introducing Flamenco series. In this video, we're going to talk about Faruca. So let's get started. style of flamenco back in the 1950s. It is a style that is in 4-4 time, similar to our pop and rock music that we might already be used to, and it is actually played in a minor key, unlike a lot of flamenco that's in a Phrygian mode. It was originally only danced by men, and it was a style that was created to showcase a man's footwork. It wasn't until the great flamenco dancer Carmen Amaya came along who decided that she wanted to dance Faruca but pay homage to its origin by wearing men's pants, which wasn't done at the time. It was very revolutionary. So she was the first woman to dance Faruca and break the gender barrier of flamenco music. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to play this basic compas, and we're also gonna add some ornaments to our compas as well. I'm gonna put a card right here for you to one of my other videos on Mi Indice Rasqueado. In that video, I do cover Faruca, but a very basic one. In this video, we're gonna add a few more ornaments to create some interest in our compas. But if you're ready to begin, let's go ahead and get started. Keep in mind that I do have a sejia or a capo on the fourth fret of my guitar today. And let's start by talking about our chords that we need to play the furuka compas. We only need three chords. The first one we need is an E7. That's middle finger on the second fret of the A string for this note. And our pointer finger on the first fret of the G string for this note. That is our first chord. The next chord we need is an A minor chord, and what I like to do for my beginner students is I like to tell them, if you build that E7 shape and then move it down one string each, so now your middle finger is on the second fret of the D string and your pointer finger is on the first fret of the B string, you have most of the shape and now we just have to add our ring finger to the second fret of the G string for this note, and now we have an A minor chord. And our final chord is a D minor chord. So another way to transition to this as well, for my beginner students, if you have that A minor shape, lift your ring finger. So now we have what looks like an E7 again. We're gonna move that whole shape down one more string each. Now our middle is second fret on G for this note. And our pointer finger is the first fret of the high E string, the first string for this note. And then we're gonna add our ring finger to the third fret of the B string for this note is our D minor chord. The chord progression of Faruka is very repetitive. It goes E7 to A minor, and then we repeat E7 to A minor, then we go to the D minor, the harmony changes there, and then we go back A minor, E7, and we end on A minor. If you want to play a very basic Faruka compas, like I always showed in my Indice Rasqueado video, then it would just be down and up in time and 4-4 four, four time. So it'll be one and two and three and four and 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 one and two. We end on beat free. Styles of flamenco that are in 4-4 four, four time, we end on beat free to symbolize that we have ended the whole piece or we are moving on to a new phrase. So that's the most basic version of the Furukum Kumpas that we can play. But in this video, we're gonna add some interest. We're gonna add some little ornaments between the chords here. So let's start on our E7. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna have a phrase that sounds like this. We have one and two. So I'm adding some fingers to get some extra notes here. So on beat one, we have a regular down up on our E7. Beat two, I'm gonna take my ring finger, move it to the second fret on the B string to get 
this note, and then we have another down up and you say rasgado. So so far we have one and at the ring finger two and on beat three, I'm gonna take my pinky finger, put it to the third fret on the B string for this note, and that's beat three. So so far we have one and two and three and on beat four. We're just gonna pull these ornaments off and go back to a regular E7 and do another down up. So we have on the E7, one and ring finger, pinky finger, back to E7. Or one and two and three and four and. And that is the first ornament we can throw in this Faruka. A minor, we can just keep the same, which is down and up. So if we combine those two ideas, we have this. down and up, one and two and. On beat three, we're gonna add our pinky finger to the third fret on the first string to get this note, and do another indice rasgado down up. That sounds like this. And then on beat four, we're just gonna lift, go back to regular D minor, and another indice rasgado down up. So we have one, contrast to the furuka that we are playing. So now if we combine all of our ideas together so far, we have this. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four and. Okay? So those are some really nice ornaments that we can throw into this furuka. After you do these ornaments, you can either end normally by just going back to A minor, one and two and three and four and, to E7, one and two and three and four and, and then ending on A minor, one and two and three. However, if you wanna add even more interest than in this, coming out of the D minor, we can do this. So what I'm doing here, we have our chords to D minor one and two and three and four and to A minor one and two and three and four and on the E7 we're gonna go one and two and three and on beat four we're gonna have some pulgar or thumb technique. We're gonna go and that ends on beat three which means that we are about to transition to something else. We hold it until the next compas. So what I'm doing here on beat four, on the A string I have third fret, second fret, and open A. From here, build your A minor chord, and we're just gonna use our thumb and go down the chord. And that's how we're gonna do this phrase. And there's two options. You can either play the A minor normal, down on beat three, so it's four and one and two and three. Or what I prefer to do, four and one and two and three. So what's the difference here? The only difference I'm doing is when I finally strum that full chord, I take the pointer finger on my fretting hand and I make a mini bar, so then I'm also holding the first fret on the first string to get this note creates this really nice harmony in the chord. So that whole section there, starting on the E7, we have one and two and three and four and one and two and three, or what the little mini bar, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And 
that is a really nice phrase you can use in your Furuka. Now let's try combining all of our ideas together. So we're going to do the ornaments on the E7 and the D minor, and then we're going to do the little tie at the end of the compas where we go back to A minor, and I'm going to do the version that has the, the mini bar on the end. So now we can play along together. So starting on the E7, let's start with our ornaments and we'll count it nice and slow. Let's go one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. D minor. falsetta, that's a good place to add one in. Let's do that one more time at a quicker speed. Keep in mind, furuka is typically a slower palo, but especially when there's a dancer, it can go a little bit faster. I would say typically it's more of a medium speed palo. So let's go just a little bit faster to get a more exciting furuka. So let's go one, two, three, four. your furuka to change the, the harmony and add some interest to what seems like already a very straight compas. And that's all I'll give you for this video. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel. And stay tuned for the next video where we will be wrapping up the Introducing Flamenco series and we will be playing some Bororia. So I will see you there and hasta luego.